Good evening guys and gals. Action by Thought here. I'm Chris. Uh, well, good evening for me anyway. <laughs> Depends on what time it is y'all are chiming in. Uh, anyway, we'll start off with prayer. Lord, we come to you now. Just praise your name for, for you, your might, your glory. Uh, your safety. We pray right now that it is my voice, but it needs to be your word, Lord, that you speak through me and that me and everybody listening will be enlightened by you, Lord. Teach us what you have for us uh, through the reading of your word and the commentary with it for this Bible study. And we just ask this in the precious name of Jesus. Because you alone are worthy. Amen. Okay, I actually had a different thought initially for this one. And what, uh, my approach got changed. My mind got changed, whatever. I reckon God had another other idea than what I thought. The title of this one is You Are Worth It. Uh, and that kind of hits what well, hits close to home for me, right at uh, past history, especially because for whatever reason I did not have a lot of self worth. I had a lot of uh, well, I had major self esteem issues, and as I will cover as we get into it, I had no reason for them whatsoever. I had a very I was very blessed with Christian family, Christian parents, Christian and church upbringing. Uh, that is a very confused topic for me, not my confusion, not my self-esteem part itself. But like my sister is very outgoing. Don't think there was very many self-esteem issues for her, although we all have our struggles. Uh, but same parents, same setting, different friends, yes, but I don't think she had that much for de uh, detrimental friends I don't believe I did either and I'm been curious for a long time especially when we get into mental health issues uh, how can two people come from the same family same area same the important stuff church and all and have vastly different personalities there uh, Anyway, I know there's people out there hurting. I know some people are like me, and it's just, you, you just struggle. I know there's people that, I mean, and I have no reason to struggle. I know there's people that are abused in multiple, in many different variations, very different ways, and that can bring in the self worth, lack of. Uh, but it is a, a question to ponder. Uh, anyway, we're going to start with Genesis chapter 2, verse, verses 4 through 9. This is the history of the heavens and the earth when they were created. In the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens, before any plant of the field was in the earth and before any herb of the field had grown, for the Lord God had not caused it to rain on earth, and there was no man to till the ground, but a mist went up from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and became a living being. Life in God's garden, which was the Garden of Eden. Verse 8 and 9, The Lord God planted a garden eastward of Eden, and, he, and there he put the man whom he had formed. And out of the ground the Lord God made every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life was also in the midst of the garden and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Uh, Genesis 2, 5 through 6 tells us that God created the heavens and the earth and everything in them and on them. The passage also tells us that God, that before God put any plant life in the ground, God created man so he would be able to till the ground and intend 
the garden. This tells me, and if anybody wants to to uh, question this, let your fingers do the talking. Comment. I'm open to it. Politely, courteous. This tells me that God created the heavens and the earth, the whole cosmos, for mankind, and took care and to. I'm sorry, for mankind to take care for mankind and for mankind to take care of and have dominion over. This included having Adam name all the animals since God gave dominion over all the wildlife, the creature and sea life to mankind. God let no vegetation grow before he put a man on the earth to tend the, the vegetation in the garden. This passage also tells us that God made Eve from Adam's very rib and had Adam name his human companion, his companion, woman, because she came from a man. And that's a quote from the from the scripture. God created a hierarchy with God at the top, man being the head of the household, head of the family. God had a purpose for all these things. He had a plan. God created and blessed mankind with a beautiful place to live before he created man. So he didn't put his cart before his horse. He gave us a place to be, and then he created us. Seems to me God's grand purpose for companionship with mankind was for, I can't read. Seems to me God's grand purpose for companionship God's grand purpose was for companionship with mankind. God visited the garden to spend time with Adam and Eve. When they sinned and ate the fruit, God asked Adam, where are you? They were both hiding, Adam and Eve. God asked Adam, where are you? He didn't ask where y'all were. He didn't ask where Adam and Eve were. He asked Adam where he was. Hierarchy. This is the second mention that God put man as the head of the house, head of the family, in hierarchy. The first mention was because God made man first and then woman from the rib of the man. Uh, Genesis 22, Genesis 2, 21 and 2. Sorry, guys. Genesis 2, 21 through 23. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall on Adam, and he slept. And he, he, God, took one of his ribs, closed up the flesh in his place. Then the rib which the Lord had taken from man, he made into a woman and brought her to the man and said to Adam, God brought her to the man. Notice there's no name, it's just her. And said, this is, and Adam said, this is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She will be called woman because she was taken out of man. Considering the title of this post, you may be wondering why I've covered all the above, and that's a fair quandary, a fair question. First off, you count. Yes, you. You count. For those with that low self-esteem, you count. God created the heavens and the earth, the cosmos. Then he created animal life, which he and Adam, which he had Adam name, and told the animals to be fruitful and multiply. Genesis 1, 20 through 23. Then God said, let the waters abound with an abundance of living creatures and let birds fly above the earth across the face of the firmament of the heavens. So God created sea creatures and every living thing that moved with the waters abounding according to their kind and every winged bird according to its kind. And God saw it was good and God blessed them saying, be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters in the seas and let birds multiply on the earth. So the evening and the morning were the fifth day. God told the wildlife to be fruitful and multiply as well. All the above creations, mankind, beast, and vegetation were created to sustain life for the pleasure of mankind as well as for all creations to be fruitful and multiply. Just think what the world would be had we actually obeyed God. In the beginning, before the sin, 
he told the wildlife and mankind to be fruitful and multiply. Uh, this one just kind of comes from, I would imagine this is what the thousand year reign will look like and then heaven after that. I mean, I don't know, but um, we'll see. Those that are Christian. You count because God created you for companionship. It started with Adam and Eve and the companionship there, but he told them to be fruitful and multiply. Again, this was before the sin was committed. After mankind sinned, there was a great there was a need for repentance for sins. God had a plan. Made a plan. His free gift of grace through faith in Jesus Christ. Once we accept his grace through faith, God commands us to his purpose of evangelism. God does not need our help. He desires it that way. He wants us to love him. He loves us, wants us to want him. Free will. He wants us to love and want him. And he's already shown us that he wants and loves us. You are very much, you that are to uh, ones with self-esteem issues and for my past history I'm again I, I know where you're coming from that's I think that's part of the purpose of this uh, God uh, you are very much part of his plan how do I know that conception and childbirth are nothing short of an amazing beautiful miracle from God you were born Regardless of now the facial expression I just made, I just caught it in the, the window and it might have looked like more irritation than not and that's not, that's not what I was conveying. I was saying you were born. So regardless of the circumstances you were desired and planned of God because you are here. God's entire design mirroring the Holy Trinity for mankind Marriage between a man and a woman, a bond which is marriage is a bond and covenant between wo the woman, the man, and God. The, anyway, and that's for life, till death do us part. Sex with husband and wife in the eternal bond of marriage. Sex inside the marriage bed, for enjoying each other's body and for the emotional, psychological, and physical bond that that creates. It's, it is a beautiful thing within the bonds of marriage. And for procreation, be fruitful and multiply. God not only has a plan for mankind, but he also knew us as all of us, as individuals, and knew his plan for us before we were conceived in our mother's womb and before he created the heavens and earth. He knew all of us. Jeremiah 1 5. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. I ordered you a prophet to the nations. That one verse, there's many others, but that one verse destroys any argument for abortion. Abortion is murder, and you're murdering God's creation. Ephesians 1 3 and 4. Blessed be the Father and God of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. Just as He chose us in Him before the foundation of the world. He chose us before the foundation of the world. He created the world before He created mankind. So that mankind had a place to be. And then He, God, chose us before in him Jesus before the creation of the world that we should be holy and, blame, and without blame before him in love that part of it he chose us in him in Jesus that we would be holy and, and without blame before him in love for God to look we are sinners God can't look on sin sin can't be in heaven so Jesus died on the cross, raised the third day to forgive all sin, including yours, including mine, all sin, all humanity, so God could look on us. 
Ephesians 1 4 says, Just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, God chose us and knew us before he created the world. Us in that. He chose us. Us means you too. I know from my past history, and I've talked some of that in my first video, or for one of the first videos. I think I talked about it a few videos ago, and I will probably share a deeper uh, testimony sometime when God puts it on my mind to do it. But I know this is staggering to think about when you're in that well of despair and self-doubt. It seems either too good to be true, or it applies to everyone but me. Friend, friends that are in that spot, this is a total lie from Satan. It is a lie. There's nothing wrong with you so far as this self-doubt. Go to God because of God's grace through faith in Jesus Christ. Ask Jesus in your heart and let the truth, let God live uh, through the Holy, by the Holy Spirit live in you and start the process of figuring out who you are because to know who you are you've got to go to God you've got to go to your creator we are not who we think we are we are who God told us to be when we surrender to it and accept that and let me tell you how freeing it is there's no words for obedience to God Whether you had just have low self-esteem, which was my case, because I had no outside reasons for it, or you've been abused in any way, and I don't mean that, that I'm not trying to lessen anything, whether it's psychological, physical, both, whatever. Whether you just have low self-esteem or you have been abused and it has turned into low self-esteem, God loves you enough to send His only Son to die on the cross for all the sins of all mankind. And yes, you are part of mankind. Uh, and I don't mean to be smart aleck or, or, or anything like that. It's just simple fact. If you're human, you're breathing, brain fire, you're part of mankind. You count. God loves you. And God loves you and I love you. I know that likely we'll never meet. But I still want you to know Jesus while you're living on earth and that, ex that the Christian walk, the Christian experience, the surrender to God, the blessings that come with that, the all and the sheer power of God that funnels through us through the Holy Spirit. I want you to know that. And I also want to see you in heaven with me. And when... It's our time to go or the rapture. Uh, and when it's our time to go, that's by God's choice. But I want you there. That's why this is so deep and important to me. I love you in Christ, and I want to see you there. Mark twelve thirty one. After the second... After the second, like it, is this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. After the second commandment. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other greater commandment than these. Luke ten twenty seven. So he answered and said, You shall love your neighbor your God. I'm sorry. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. Uh, this is about you this is about me this is about everybody on the planet this explains why Christians are to love each other and love everybody including our enemies and whatever uh, when we love our neighbor as ourself this is also implying that this is talking to Christians that 
can understand love because God loved us so we could love him and we can understand what love is. And again, I uh, think I said it up here. I know I've talked, said it two or three times. In my case, I had no self-esteem. And I don't have any idea why. I was blessed with a Christian upbringing, but still had low self-esteem. Again, I know your battle. I know at, at least the thoughts that can come with that battle. I also know, no matter what the source of your battle the thoughts that can come with it. Sometimes I, my thinking goes ahead of my reading. And I say them twice, and that's okay. Maybe you heard it one time or the other. <laughs> Knowing the right thing to do is easy. Living out that, walking it out, can be tough or at least tougher. But it's always rewarding. And the tougher things are, the more rewarding they are on the other side when you finally get to that realization when you and God are when you get closer to God God will honor your pure heart and grow you in him and grant you the power of the Holy Spirit living in you when you put your faith in Jesus Christ and ask him into your heart I also know God the creator of the universe is bigger than anything you face anything I face anything anybody will face he created the cosmos he created the world and he created us and he loves us humans more than any of the rest of it because he put us in dominion of all the rest of it and he desires us to love him there's your free will uh, otherwise he'd have robots God is bigger than anything you face trust him Surrender to Him and find the power of the Holy Spirit through faith in Jesus Christ once you've asked Him into your heart. He will honor and protect and guide you when you surrender your life to Christ. John 3.16, for those that don't know, this is Red Letter Edition, or reading from it, which means it's Jesus' own words. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Now here's the kicker of that for the what one part of so far as that low self esteem and thinking that you're condemned by God, you are not. We're as Christians we're not. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but rather that the world through him, Jesus, might be saved. Jesus' is death on the cross. The whole picture, the birth, his his ministry on earth, and then he died on the cross, raised again the third day for to forgive our sins and the sins of all humanity. Once and for all, perfect sacrifice because he was blameless, he was perfect, 100% deity, 100% human, but no sin. The perfect sacrifice to atone for our sins. He stepped in for us. As John 17 says, God sent his son to save the world, not condemn the world. And you, my friend, that I haven't met, you are certainly part of this world that God sent his son, Jesus, into to save. And I urge you, I beg you, I compel you, do not linger, do not wait any longer. Accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, Savior and Lord, right now. And if you'll pray this prayer with me. Lord, I know I'm a lost sinner. I believe you died on the cross and was raised again the third day for the remission of my sins and all the sins of all humanity. Forgive me of my sins, Lord, I repent. Come live in my heart, dear Lord. I want to live my life for you. Thank you for loving me so that I can know love and I can love you. In Christ's holy name I pray, amen and amen. If you sincerely prayed the prayer above, the, what I just read congratulations you are a child of god a christian you are saved i am proud of you for taking this first step i know it can be scary but it, it's also peaceful a peace that you can't explain not to somebody that is not saved and you can feel that peace immediately
that peace in your heart in that first step to your Christian life and walk. Now you need to find a God-fearing, holy Bible-preaching church. Talk to and pray with the preacher pastor, and he will preach your whatever they call him, whichever one they call him. And he will be glad and excited to assist you in your Christian growth, your faith, and Christ-like walk. If you are one that you know that you know that you know that you're Christian, but you've gotten away from God, no matter how long you've been away from God, no matter what you've done, God is bigger. Sincerely pray for forgiveness, repent, and turn back to God. God will honor your sincere repentance. Sincere is the key for, for all this. Now, go find a preacher, pastor. If you're already in a church, great. If you're not, pray God will lead you to one, a God-fearing, Bible-preaching church, to talk to and pray with the pastor, preacher. He will be honored to assist you in your rededication to Christ and assist you in your Christ, in Christ and your Christian walk. I am proud of you for, for you starting your way back to a God-first, God-centered life. Before I go any further, and I'm almost done, I do a I apologize, I have tripped over my reading this entire time, <laughs> but don't let the devil win. Keep at it, keep plugging the, you can go back to the beginning of the video if you're watching it, if you get to the video by the blog, reread it, hopefully my grammar is better in type than it was tonight, but don't let me having a bad night with, with tripping over my words stop you from hearing from Jesus. Uh, God's words through me in this instance. God's word, anyway. My voice, his words. If anyone would like to communicate further, please let your fingers do the talking and comment on the blog that I'm reading off of or the video uh that's attached it's also attached to the to the blog if you would like to discuss things more privately my email address is below on the blog and it's in the comment of the description of the YouTube podcast video uh, and I'd be glad to discuss things with you further I would be honored uh, People, I do want to say, once again, I am not a counselor of any sort. I'm a struggling Christian like every other Christian. I am actively and excitedly seeking God's will for my life through the Holy Spirit in prayer, personal, holy Bible study, quiet, sit still and listen time. Literally be quiet for a little while so that there can be some actual communications. We take our petitions to God, our praise all of that, but we need to be still and let Him speak to us. He speaks to us through His Word and through the Holy Spirit. That quiet, still voice can be there. Uh, it's not that I got a voice this time, but just like this one, I was going to do this blog and, and video on a different subject. And then this is what hit me when I sat down and started typing. Again, I am not a counselor. I'm a struggling Christian like all others. I'm active and excitedly seeking God's will for my life through the Holy Spirit. Uh, that quiet time, you need small Bible, small group Bible study if you find one. And it wouldn't be the same as in person, but if you don't have any other option, send me the email or the comments. When I see them, I will reply. Uh, you need Christian support and of course, with church attendance. Christians, it is not enough to be willing. You must be actively seeking God's will and you must live it out. What difference does it make to be, I mean, what are you doing if you're reading your Bible, you're going to church, Sunday school, all of it, but you're not talking to anybody, you're not evangelizing, you're not reaching out to people. God, pray for those opportunities. A friend of mine just posted on Facebook that she did pray for those opportunities and she got three or four in one day it's not always going to be that way but it was for her then God will honor 
pure heart and actively seeking Him and praying for opportunity. Pray for conviction so that you can clear your heart out and anything you've got between you and God is on you. Anything I've got between me and God is on me. And I want it gone. So you, you've you got to be willing, but you've also got to be actively seeking God's will. And when you get that answer from God as Christians, you've got to live it out. Go. Go tell it on the mountain. Go uh, evangelize. Think about it this way. There are one example of it. If you want to play baseball and you go to practice all the time, you practice regularly with the team and in the yard with that or whatever, but you stay home when it's game time. What have you done? What are you accomplishing? You can throw the ball pretty good or whatever it is that you do at practice, but if you're not putting it in use, you're not helping yourself, you're not helping the team, you're hurting both, as well as your reputation. Christianity... Christians, Christianity is not a passive lifestyle. The first word in the Great Commission is go. Go tell. Now, as usual, if you will please like, share, and subscribe to the blog site, to the YouTube channel, the video. Yes, it helps the channel. Yes, it helps the blog site, website. But the main thing is it spreads the gospel. And that's the point. Uh, please help there if you would. <laughs> please help there if you would, please. Uh, like, share, subscribe. Fellas and fellers in Christ, I love every one of you. The best part is God loves you. And yes, you with that low self-esteem. And if you would like to discuss some of that with me, uh, the low self-esteem part, Fairly satisfied you'll want to do that more in email than the other, so it's private between us. Uh, I will be glad to go back and forth with you, uh, communicate with you. I am not a counselor, and we'll just go with it from there. But the first thing you need to do is pray. Pray, 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 pray. Let God lead you where you need to go for boots on the ground help. Uh, again in Christ I love every one of you but the best thing is God loves you until the next one fellers and fellettes I'm Chris love you guys oh